Hey everybody, Captain Canuck here, and uh, today I wanted to talk about two main themes that kind of go hand in hand with each other, and that is Shopify Rebellion and Identity. Not Entity, Identity. Now I'll get into that in a second, but Shopify just announced their new roster. It is Arteezy, Yopaj, Saberlight, Theolicor, Kitrack with Bulba Coaching. Now in my opinion, this roster looks bad. And this roster has been bad going back quite a long time. Now... They're consistently first in North America. They win every BTS Pro Series. They almost come first in every single DPC that there's been since it came out. But they're always abysmal on the international stage, or at least they have been for a few years now. At TI-12, they came 13th to 16th. At Riyadh, they went 15th to 16th. Bali, they went 9th to 12th. Berlin, they went 9th to 12th. At the Lima Major, they came came in 4th. TI-11, they went 9th to 12th. Arlington, 9th to 12th. Stockholm, they came 13th. TI-10, they came 9th to 12th. And before that were their only two significant victories or relative victories in the last few years with second at the Anna Major and second at the Singapore Major and the Anna Major notoriously being swept 3-0 in the finals. Now, the reason I want to bring this up and I want to talk about this roster and their story now that it's kind of done, now that they've broken up, is I really want to focus on the idea of identity in Dota. I think what makes a really successful and long-standing Dota team is that they have a binding identity and their own idea of Dota that brings them together. There's cohesiveness in the way that they think about the way they want to play Dota. I can think of so many rosters throughout history that just had this intense sense of identity to them, you know? TI3 Alliance, it was ratting, it was backdooring, it was global relocation. They were always thinking about the whole map. TI5 CDEC, Aggressive's quick rotations were a huge part of that team. He, his name was Aggressive, and he was aggressive. He was always TPing to other lanes, fighting early. There was like a classic six-minute rotation that he would make and just go to the off lane and fight as a carry, which was unheard of. Crazy. Identity. TI7, Liquid had this unique flexibility of one and two position where Miracle and Matu would swap lanes and they played the same heroes, so you could never quite tell where anything was going to end up. It lended their drafts a ton of flexibility. TI8, OG had this exploration of damage mitigation. They had Chen, they had Io, Centaur, Ag, Spectre, all of these sources of damage mitigation and damage reduction that they used to be the tankiest team possible that you just couldn't kill. TI9 OGs had this core Io and this relentless death ball idea that they were just always in your face running games over in 15, 16 minutes. It was crazy. And, you know, these are all just TI champions. It's easy to look at a TI champion and say, oh, well, they were good because of that. But, like, even teams that don't have, that don't win TIs can carry identity. Game and Gladiators this year, they challenged that long game meta because, oh, the map is so big and games have to be so slow. And they decided, you know what, screw that. We're going to pick Chen and we're going to run at you. We're going to death ball. We're going to end games quick. And that pulled them all the way to a grand finals. South American teams like uh, the old like Beast Coast infamous Ambergesa roster, they always had this like intense early game roaming. Schofield's Nyx and his Earthshaker were just so good because he was always on the map causing problems and like killing mid laners at like six, seven, eight minutes into the game. It was awesome. So really this sense of what a team is, you can tell when a team has identity. And Shopify, formerly EG, is a team that I think I can confidently say has never really had an identity. I cannot think of a tournament where this EG Shopify roster, you know, ever just did something that made me go, whoa, you know? Like, it always just felt like they were playing the meta and they were just executing it as best they could. And sometimes that landed them in a better position than others, but I, I honestly... Thinking back to those second place finishes at the Anna Major and the Singapore Major, I can't think of what their drafts were. I don't know what kind of heroes they played. I can't think of their style or, or, or you know, their, their drafting focus. And so, really, this idea started to stick in my head of, like, okay, you know, identity. And so I started looking at, at their drafts from all these major events, and they just kind of seemed to play what gets played in group stages. It feels like, you know, the meta kind of forms as everyone's doing the round robin. They get by on their execution, and then they get in the finals or the, the playoffs, and they just play that. And I think Bulba as a drafter is just too reactive. He just looks at what everyone else is doing 
and tries to match. He tries to kind of keep pace with that. But he's not innovative. He's not thinking ahead. He's not trying to form the team into their own distinct set of, of heroes and stuff. The best finish they've had in all of these three years was at the Singapore Major when Balba picked Abed Storm five games in a row. This was like the infamous game where IG threw a question mark at them because they turned it around and pulled a reverse sweep. And it was hilarious, but at least... EG felt like they had an identity there. They felt like they were empowering Abed. They were playing around him. They said, this guy is insane on one hero. We're going to give it to him, and we're going to just ball up on his lane and, and play to that strength. That felt somewhat innovative. And, you know, it feels like as the years have gone on, that roster just kind of was a draft-by-committee roster. You know, they just talked it out and they said, oh, I don't know, I want to play this, no, I want to play this, I, I want to play this. You know, but it doesn't feel like they've had a strong leader in the room that can pull this team into a cohesive vision. You look at these top teams, you know, like I think Team Spirit's a good example. They've got this identity of, of collapsed Magnus that everybody has to play around. Yatoro's carries are so scary and he plays so many of them, you can't draft him out, that sort of thing. And, and there's just none of that in the room. You look at the Chinese teams, Lanham and Shao Aider, these kind of legendary old gods that get in a room and they tell their team, this is what you're playing. Go wash your face. Like, there is strength in that leadership, and I just don't feel that with this roster. Now, Artesia is stuck by Bulba through and through, and after all of this, we now end up with a roster of relative nobodies paired with mainly just Artur. You know, it's Arteezy. Uh, Saberlight, who have been on the roster together before, but Yopesh, Theolacor, and Kitrak are basically just kind of NA randos at this point, and I'm pessimistic about what they're going to be able to achieve. I feel like without that leadership, these newer players are just going to flounder. Now, you know, that being said, there could be a double edge to that sword where maybe with less powerful voices in the room, maybe without Crit and Fly, who are experienced captains and drafters in, in their own right that uh, Bulba might be forced to step up and take bigger swings and say, hey, we're going to go for something drastic. We're going to try something new. And maybe that pans out for them. But I, I really feel like, you know, this roster is just kind of being set up to fail. Maybe they do well in NA, but I think as soon as they hit international, it's it's going to be a rough time. But anyways, that's about the time I've got. Let me know what you guys think down below. Is Bulba a top coach that can bring Shopify to the top of a major? Is Arteezy crazy for sticking around this long and not just leaving for greener pastures in another region? What do you guys think of Crit, Fly, and Abed leaving after this year's pitiful TI performance? You know, let me know what you think down below, and obviously leave a like and subscribe. We'd love to have you around more. Thanks for watching. You guys are all beautiful, and I'll see you again next time.